Hi, I'm Dennis Wilson. At Delta Dental of New Jersey, we're committed to educating the public about the importance of good oral health and its role in our overall health and well-being. That's why we're proud to support the important healthcare programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Building a culture of health next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Georgian Court University, Bartley Healthcare, Nursing Rehabilitation and Assisted Living, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Everyone Deserves a Healthy Smile, Johnson & Johnson, The Fidelco Group, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by Jaffe Communications, where business, media, and government converge in New Jersey. Welcome to Caucus, I'm Steve Adubato. New Jersey towns and cities are working really hard to break down barriers to good health in lasting ways. Here in the studio to discuss how some communities are tackling these health challenges, we are joined by Elaine McKay, Senior Director of Initiatives at the Gateway Family YMCA in beautiful Elizabeth, New Jersey. Dr. Monique Griffith, who is Director of Irvington Health Department and Senior Services. Bob Atkins, Director of New Jersey Health Initiatives at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And finally, Rachel Bland, Director of the Orange excuse me, the Healthy Orange Coalition for the Orange Public Schools. I apologize for that. We're going to be seeing a website up throughout this program that talks about um, important health initiatives. And Bob, let me ask you, what in fact, the, in fact is a culture of health from your uh, point of view? And then we'll talk a little bit more about what the foundation is doing. Yeah, well, a culture of health is really um, this idea right now. It's this idea of how we take this health conversation, which typically occurs you know, traditionally downstream, right? Between our patients and providers and our healthcare systems addressing issues like asthma or diabetes. Um, childhood really, obesity. Childhood obesity, all these things that are kind of already kind of fixed, they've happened. Mm. And taking this conversation and moving it upstream to where we work, play, live and learn, and really engaging new sectors, new voices, making health a shared value. And so it's something that's very exciting, it's very new, um, but it's really a different conversation that we're having. Also, to make things clear, everyone here, if I'm not mistaken, is a grantee of the foundation. Yeah. Uh, we are, in fact, a yeah. grantee, as we disclosed uh, up front um, in the introduction of the foundation's uh, efforts to support programming that supports public health. Let me ask you, doctor, um, the Irvington Health Coalition does what? Talk about it. The Health Coalition really worked to bring together a lot of the stakeholders within the community to improve the quality of life within the township as a whole. Some of the challenge, the health challenges facing a community like Irvington would be? Many that you mentioned. Uh, we see high rates of uh, diabetes, childhood obesity, uh, hypertension, uh, heart disease, and so we came together because we want to address that. And a lot of times there are health disparities and disparities that we're noticing within Irvington and working to, de to d develop programs and strategies to address each one of those within the township. Is Orange much different or are they some of the same challenges? They are very much the same challenges. What is one of the opportunities and another challenge is that we have similar health issues and similar problems as Irvington or Newark, but we're much smaller. So Orange is 2.2 square miles, but we still have these very serious issues. Um, and so that was why with our coalition, we wanted to look at how we can address them in a different way. And because we have this opportunity, because we're so small and we have these stakeholders that are constantly in collaboration with each other and talking with each other in different ways, is how do we look at the assets that we do have? Because mm -hmm. some of these health outcomes are bigger than just getting somebody an inhaler or getting somebody to be tested for diabetes. So that's why we decided to focus on how do we create a culture of health and a culture of learning. Um, you know, as I'm listening to this, it, it, it strikes me more and more, and more in this way. So each one of us as nonprofits, as 501c3s, you know, who do what we do every day, sometimes the potential exists for us to get in our 
bubble, our silo, to do what we do. Say, that's what we do. That's no money, no mission. We were talking about raising money before. That's my mission. Seems to me, could be wrong here, and you'll help me here as well, Bob, that that paradigm, that model, when it comes to creating a culture of health, doesn't work so neatly and cleanly because the needs of many, particularly in communities, I mean, I'm born and raised in New York, you're talking about Orange and Irvington and others, that the needs are so complex, so multifaceted, that they don't neatly fall into these areas. So these coalitions, long-winded question I know, require, I mean, it requires that. So no one non nonprofit can deal with it, right? Correct, and that's where I think, from a YMCA point of view, we understood that this is going to take more than the YMCA to create these changes that are very similar in each community. The solutions may be different, but they're similar. And I think through the coalition work, we've learned that um, we need both shared leadership, shared responsibility, and shared resources in order to be successful in what we're trying to do and to reach the people that we want to reach within the community. There's a whole trust issue. There's a whole who do people go to. Issue. I think uh, different parts of the community um, relate more to um, people and organizations that are similar to them. So in order for us to cross over and be able to serve more people, we need to work with organizations that already have that relationship with mm. people and then come in with additional services and additional things so that um, the people will be willing to come. Because so many times we begin a meeting and everyone's like, we're doing it, no one's coming. Wow. We're trying to do this, no one's coming. And we wanted to make sure that if we were going to offer something, people would come and it would be what they wanted. Can I just add to that, though? Of course. One, one of the things that we're really trying to do in this grant making is to get, as you point out, all these different kind of sectors and voices at the table. But what philanthropy sometimes does is we come into a space, we put resources on the table, and then everyone competes mm -hmm. for it, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes adversarial. Against and each other. Against each other. Right. So then it, that makes it hard to think about how you're going to leverage right. assets. Why well, am I going to work with right. them? They right. can wind up getting it. <laughs> right. and not right. going to win. Right. 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 We can't have winners right. and losers, right? right? right. But right. why doesn't that work? Why doesn't that work, that, that old paradigm, that old model, that we're all going to compete against each other for a grant from the Robert Wood Johns Foundation or any, you know, right. we're supported by a variety of foundations and, and we're very appreciative yeah. of that. But even a public broadcasting, I'm not gonna complicate this question, but we must, we have to collaborate with others right. as opposed to simply compete right. or we can't truly make a difference. Right, right, and, and, and so I wanna go further and saying, yeah, not that it doesn't work, it's been great. I mean, there's been great, mm -hmm. great things that come does out of it. Does it solve the problems you're trying right. to address? Right. Does, it, does, it, does, it, does it leverage assets? Does it really right. kind of, as Rachel mm -hmm. put out, right. every community has deficits and we're never going to address all those. Right. But thinking about the assets, and that's what mm -hmm. they've done in Orange, that's mm -hmm. what they've done in Irvington, that's what they're doing in Elizabeth, mm -hmm. is thinking about what are our assets, how do we leverage our resources, how do we share and think about, right. mm -hmm. hey, you know what, I have this transportation and you have these kids that need mm -hmm. to get to, to, from A to B right. and I can share that with you. So if we can get them to start to trust each other right. and that's what they've done great in Elizabeth and Irvington right. and Orange and in other communities. Shared well, resources, oh, sorry. Absolutely. Well, we're talking about shared resources because right. mm -hmm. what, what I'm curious about is how challenging, let's be specific, you're smiling. Um, how challenging <laughs> was it, is it, to get others that you're collaborating with to understand that we are stronger together than any one of us would be individually, particularly when we're trying to create this culture of health. We cannot do this alone. In theory, no one's gonna debate that. Mm -hmm. The practice of doing it, how hard? Anytime you're trying to change behavior, it's difficult. Mm. And so it's something that takes time. So even when we talk about culture, right, that's something that's a little more ingrained and it's something that will ultimately make something sustainable. But oftentimes when you have entities and individuals doing the same thing for a really long period of time. It's the way we do things. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It takes time, and that's a part of the challenge. It's not impossible, but everyone has to buy into the shared vision of what we're trying to do when we're collaborating. So give us an example, the Irvington Health Coalition. Mm -hmm. Give us an, I hate to use the word operationalize, mm -hmm. it gets very academic, but let's operationalize this. Okay. In Irvington, mm -hmm. your coalition has what two or three entities that come together and are stronger together than they could ever be alone to help create this culture of health? We have churches, local churches that are a part of the coalition. We have a neighborhood health and wellness entity that's also a part of the coalition. We have the public school system that's also a How part of the- How public schools? 
Uh, you said how? How, how? how are they involved? Well, we communicate with the superintendent. We, a lot of our programs involve the, the children that are enrolled. And oftentimes, when we're trying to communicate with the parents, it's helpful also to communicate and involve the children. So when we talk about childhood obesity, sure. it's important to engage them as well. For example, recently we organized a 5K because we wanted to draw awareness about the importance of reducing childhood obesity. Oftentimes you see children going to school with a bag of chips and That's not right. necessarily eating properly in the morning, and they don't necessarily have an understanding of why that is important because, and we know, that they're building behaviors and habits that will last into adulthood and impact their, the, you know, their health in, or as adults. It feels like a lot of this is education. Absolutely, absolutely. Not just advocacy, but education. If I'm not mistaken, I'll come back to you, Rachel. Sure. Elaine, do you work with the police department? Well, we work with the police department, but I would say our, one of our biggest successes is our mobile market. And what, what mobile a, market? A mobile market. So what we found with Shaping Elizabeth is the people that are coming to our coalition, some have the people that need support and need extra resources, and some organizations mm -hmm. have the resources. So mm -hmm. how do we match that up? So the mobile market was an idea. So we work with the City of Elizabeth Housing Authority, which is a great partner, and they work with thousands of people in housing. And we had the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, which had food mm -hmm. and things to offer. So that began this whole thing of bringing food to people that needed it right. from an organization that had food. From that, we've layered other resources with wow. community gardens, with nutrition and education mm -hmm. with other resources that they need in order mm -hmm. to hopefully change the culture even within the housing. And, and Rachel, you, you've worked, you work in the food insecurity area? Um, so I'm based out of the Orange Public School System. So we work directly with our education system and... Who do you collaborate with? We collaborate with, similarly, the churches, the... Don't forget your mayor. Your mayor's at the table. Mm -hmm. I, that was... Okay. I can sorry, never forget sorry. the <laughs> city of Orange and our mayor. See, a good <laughs> grant tour right. knows who's involved in the coalition, but go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we work uh, with the city, our mayor and city hall and city council. We work with the Board of Education and then our local nonprofits and businesses. And that was one of our decisions working around the Is higher ed involved education. Too? Yes, How we so? also have um, partnerships with Montclair State University and Drew University. And that's one of the ways that our coalition has started to grow and really mm -hmm. connect different resources and different initiatives that were happening in town and really get them to understand how we're all working together on this same issue, but tackling from different perspectives. Bob, let me ask you something. As, as I'm listening to all the elements, all the pieces of the coalitions, respective coalitions, and there are many other. By the way, how many are we talking? 20. 20. How, when there are so many organizations involved? Hundreds, right? The grant, I mean, to, to fully disclose, we've said this before, we said it on the air, the, gr the grant from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation comes to our not-for-profit to help produce important programming around mm -hmm. these and other issues. But when you're dealing with so many other not-for-profits, hate to get into the weeds, who does the grant go to? Right, mm -hmm. right. So, so in Orange, the schools, that, that was mm -hmm. the lead applicant, the health department, the YMCA, but United Way, um, th there's other different kinds of entities that will be the, but, but what's important about that is thinking about how they are creating this opportunity to bring other voices to the table. That is really kind of their prime objective is thinking about how do we figure out how we get our older adults, our youth, our faith-based groups, our um, special needs populations, get our schools, get our police, police, police uh, chiefs, get our school superintendents. They have to be at the table to make sustainable change. And that's what these organizations are doing so well. And what's so important about this is, look, this College of Health idea is brand new, right? The foundation came out with it a couple years ago. Totally different model. But these are the pioneers. They're gonna look right. at what we're doing in New Jersey 15 years from now, 10 years from now, and say, hey, this is how we build a culture of health. So this is, like you say, operationalized. This is where the rubber hits the road. And these guys are, we're so proud of what they're doing. And we're partnering with them. We're, yeah. we're, this is a different kind of grant making right. for us. Mm -hmm. for, before we go to this break, Bob, is it fair to say that the entities who receive the grants, uh, as a basketball fan, I always think, uh, who's the point guard? Mm. Are they the respective point guards that, yeah. that bring in others and facilitate? Yeah, and they distribute, they, 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 they move the ball around, they get everyone in the game, and that's what they do such a good job of. And that's where, when you go to these meetings, um, like Irvington had a meeting on a Friday night, um, right? And the, right? The church was packed, Absolutely. but you could feel the energy in Absolutely. there. And Diane Hagerman, our deputy director of programming, was there, and she said, you had to feel this. Mm -hmm. um, and we wish we could have right. you know, all been there, but that's the kind of energy that, that's, that's and being lots of created. Sorry for interrupting, and lots of 
different folks came to that church yes. on Friday it was, uh, night? On a Friday, Friday night. night. How many people? How many people? We had over 100. Yeah. So hold on a second. Okay. You were just saying, I know, I know when there's a break, but one second. Elaine was saying before, we have these programs, no one comes. But you got Friday night on a church. Friday night. Not Friday Sunday, night. Friday mm-hmm. in a church because? Right. Because what we were talking about resonated with the community. And everybody wanted to come together to see how we could actually wow. work together to accomplish the same goal. I love when people say, people don't care. Yeah. That's just not true. They need uh, the right opportunity, the right mm-hmm. venue, the right point guard, and the right uh, environment. I'll be right back. We'll keep talking about this very important subject, the culture of health, right after this. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Uh, thanks for staying with us, folks. We're talking about the culture of health with a group of uh, very distinguished experts on the subject, mm-hmm. together with the Barbara Wood Johnson Foundation leading this effort. Bob, let me ask you real quick, as, as we were talking about during the break, what have we missed so far and what's so important to be doing moving forward to um, make more of a difference? Because this is such an, a new idea, right? A new kind of concept, a, a different model. Um, one thing we have to make sure that we're doing, and, and these grantees are, are doing a great job of it, is sharing what they're learning. I mean, sharing, so sharing what we're learning. We, it's a lot of times philanthropy thinks about how we're going to measure what we're doing, right? How we move in the needle. And we don't give them enough resources to really do that, um, to do it right. But we can share what we're learning. And these guys have done a great job of sharing through social media, through print media, through their blogs, um, and making sure their community is getting engaged and feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to be part of this process. And that's why we're so proud of what these grantees are doing in New Jersey, because they're bringing others to the table. And it's not just about the experts, but if we share what we're learning, we're doing a good job of that, share our stories, and people are going to realize this is how we do it. You know, it's interesting. The whole concept of uh, defining a culture of health includes so many different pieces to this, but the question of quote unquote community safety, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a health issue. Yeah, Talk about it. Well, one of the ways that it's really grateful that the grant has been able to provide us is not only technical training and a little funding, is that it allows us to really get people who don't always talk together to come together and have conversations. So in Orange, one of the ways that that happened was the Churches formed an Orange Interfaith Council, and then we had a meeting with the Early Childhood Center, and they talked. And as we talked, we discovered community safety is an issue, but the churches had people. They had these resources, but didn't know how to connect to the schools. And so we started working with Safe Routes to School, and this, these so are the ways. You did that real quick. Safe mm-hmm. Routes to Schools. Routes I heard school. about this. I want, under, I want people to understand a little better. So it's a program, and it really, again, c- engages the schools, the students, the parents, because they are the people who are walking day in and day out so, through the school. Sorry for interrupting. Does it, is it helping to identify safer ways for children to get to and from school? The first step is identifying how are they traveling to school. Mm. And already, so again, it's that asset-based model. And instead of reinventing the wheel, what's already happening? And then how do you make it better? So first is, how are the kids getting to and from school? Are they cutting through that? Mm empty field? Mm, right. Are they walking and following all of the safety wow. instructions? And then knowing that, okay, there's not always adults at each of these points, and maybe there are. So then how do we work together so that we're all looking out for our community? And through that, we started working on other ways of identifying other issues that we weren't thinking about, but the kids experience. Such as? Just with enough crossing guards, bikes, wow. people who are biking. Um, when you think of orange, you don't think of a biking community, but there are people who bike, and the kids get from point A to point and B. And what about helmets involved in that? Getting, changing the culture of wearing helmets. Oh <laughs> Trust me, we've got a 13, 14-year-old. We, we, mm-hmm. But see, yeah. the important thing yeah. also that I want to point out is, is what Rachel's describing, is not how orange is doing for the community, but how orange is doing with the community. With. And that is what For and co- with, big difference. Big difference. That preposition is mm-hmm. it's, it's huge. <laughs> um, but that's what all of these uh, Sector, cross-sector coalitions are doing with the community. Right. And that's a different approach, right? Not saying we're going to come in here and do for you. We're going to do with you. I think that one of the two things we've learned that have worked is, number one, we need to bring things to where people are versus mm-hmm. asking people to hey, come to Hey, why don't you to come us. to our place? Yes. Right. <laughs> we're saying we need to go to them. And the second thing is we need to layer intervention. So it's not just one thing, but it's a number, several things that will work. So even with safety, when we talk about um, the community coming to meetings, 
we would prefer to say to now the police and different people, come to where we are, come to the mobile market, come to Play Streets, come to where we have the people coming already. Play Street? Play Streets is a, a way to be able, one of our initiatives to get people more active. So what we try and do is close down small sections of the city and we come in with different groups, bring different activities in and we come to the community and we say come out and find out about how you can be healthy, how you can be more active and we add activity to it. L let me try this one. Mm, we are not a political program. That's not what we do. But there's an expression that's coming to mind right now as we're talking about this. Does it take a village? It definitely does. Describe the village. The village, at least in Irvington, includes the parents. It includes the seniors because they're truly they're the backbone of our community. And it involves the school system. It involves, you know, the administration, the municipality, the council. Hmm. It involves everyone coming together and bringing their different vantage points to the table so that and the, the needs, resources. And the resources, right. the resources so that needs can be met. And it, to mm -hmm. you know, the points that were made before, it's not about what you think the community needs. It's mm -hmm. listening to the community and really identifying what the challenges are and then together working to meet those needs. By the way, older, more mature citizens in these mm -hmm. communities, together with those who are particularly young, right. that's part of the coalition? That is. What's that look like? We have a wonderful youth and senior companion program a youth and developed. senior companion program yes. as part of the culture of health? Correct. Explain the connection there. Well, mainly what we identified was that those two populations were experiencing similar symptoms, if you will, For example. Uh, related to isolation. They were more prone to isolation, and as a result, they were experiencing more depressive symptoms. Kids? Kids, and, and then seniors se as well, because the seniors are now, they're retired, and they're also continuing to seek uh, their purpose and identify their purpose, and the youth are trying to identify who they are. And, and, and can I just add on to sure, that? Sure. We're, just, we're proud to announce that. We just announced our 10 um, Next Generation Community Leaders grants, and Elizabeth mm -hmm. actually got one well, of those. Called? The Next, Next generation. generation Community Leaders. And so <laughs> it's a three-year grant right. um, to 10 youth-serving organizations across the state, $200,000 grants, and what they're doing is working with these coalitions, mm -hmm. working with coalitions. So in Elizabeth, Groundworks Elizabeth is going to be right. working with Elaine's Coalition, and Elaine's Coalition is going to come and talk to these 10 to 15 youth who are going to listen right. and work with her coalition mm -hmm. and think about what are the health issues that we can be addressing that will be our paid summer employment for the following summer. And so they have nine mm -hmm. months of, right. of working wow. with the community, mm -hmm. and then they implement a one-month project as their paid right. summer employment, um, but they also are developing leadership skills and right. also figuring out what it takes and to build healthier we communities. We hope that it will bring um, the teens and youth into our coalition to be part of the process for change because they have a total, seniors have a different perspective, right. our youth and teen have right. a different right. perspective of what they need. So Groundwork Elizabeth will lead this for us, but all of our partners, because we have been working together, will be part of this solution and work with the children that are going to be involved. But, but let me just do a quick follow up on this. Um, you're the director of New Jersey Health Initiatives. Mm -hmm. Who sits around? Down in Princeton. At We're actually based out of Canada. We're in Princeton sometimes. <laughs> okay. At the, at, I'm not going to say corporate, but right. at the, the, that office. Right. Who sits around and comes up with these very imaginative, mm. collaborative ideas that says, you want our dollars? Yeah. You're going to have to be right. awfully creative and get right. out of the box. Yeah, right. I mean, I think that's what building culture health is, right? How do we kind of take this opportunity to engage new voices, new sectors? We, we realize that we need to engage with youth voice by, by, from all of our partners here. Because our partners that's what you got from them. But that's what we realize who's not at the table. We're looking around the table. Right. Who's not here? Youth aren't right. here. How do we get them here? This next generation community leaders is something that we developed, and we hope to get more ideas from talking to these great partners of ours in terms of what their communities need, because they know much better than we could ever know what Elizabeth needs, right. what mm -hmm. Orange needs, what Camden needs, what Irvington needs, what Trenton needs. So Why is this, could this be, what you're describing with the um, New, Jer New Jersey Health Initiatives, the Building a Culture of Health, it, it is nationwide. Oh, New Jersey Health Initiatives is only New Jersey. Jersey. Exactly, right. here's my point. Oh. Why isn't it nationwide? Oh, oh. And is it not the model you're talking about? Right. Why wouldn't this work in, dare I say, Philadelphia, Detroit? Well, since I, I'm just, I'm not advocating that the Robert Wood Johnson's oh. Foundation right. spill. No, but they're, they're watching what we're doing, Steve. I mean, they're, they're calling us. But this is a right. national model. Yeah, right. right. We right. think so, right. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing I'm curious about is, is the other foundations who are out there that decide who they um, award money to. 
Does it potentially change the philanthropic model? I know I'm being very philosophical. Does it change the philanthropic model as to what they expect from not-for-profits in terms of dealing with, if not solving, complex problems? Absolutely. It's changed it already, I Definitely. think. Right. So, and when you're looking for things, people are looking that are funding for groups that are working together, collaborating, coalitions in order to, because it is going to be the way that we make change in the future, especially these big items of change in, in communities. Right. Well, we're collaborating with the also. Go ahead. Dodge Foundation, Fund right. for New Jersey, um, Grata Fund, Taub Foundation. They're all our partners. Right. They're our partners in this work, and that is something that we're learning from you that we have to partner as well. We can't um, right. just say, oh, we're not going to partner. You have to partner as well. We're a partner. We're, a partner. we're right. mixing our dollars with them. Well, uh, we'll talk off the air, but uh, I just want to say that uh, all of us who are in the not-for-profit community do what we do every day, but we can't do it alone, and we thank you very much. Let's catch you next time. You were going to say. Oh, I was gonna the preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Georgian Court University. Bartley Healthcare, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, The Fidelco Group, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. What is it? <laughs> it's you. It's me? <laughs> All right, I'm a, I know it's not your favorite, but it's time for your medicine, okay? You ready? One, two, three. Emma, Emma, Bob, Emma, Banana, Fanna, Fof, Emma, Fee, Five, Fof, Emma, Emma. Very good, sweetie. How do you feel? Good. Yeah, you did a really good job, okay? Let's go back to drawing.